Rio de Janeiro, 27th of August, 1883. A senior civil servant of the Brazilian imperial household dies of typhus and leaves a widow and five orphans. Touched by the loss, Isabel, Princess Imperial of Brazil, offers a college scholarship to the 15-year-old only male son. The young man refuses, and tells the princess that, as a Republican, he could not and would not accept any favors from the crown. This dauntless young man, Augusto Pestana, would become an engineer, a statesman and one of the main leaders of the Republican Party of the great state of Rio Grande do Sul, in southern Brazil. Pestana was born on the 22nd of May 1868, in the then capital of the Empire of Brazil. His parents were of Portuguese heritage and belonged to middle-class families that came to Rio in the early 19th century at the time of the transfer of the Portuguese court to South America. In spite of his conservative and devout Catholic upbringing, the young Pestana joined the Republican movement which would contribute to overthrow the Brazilian monarchy. As many in his generation, he was deeply influenced by the ideas of the French philosopher Auguste Comte, founder of positivism. After the loss of his father in 1883, Pestana taught history, geography and mathematics to help his family, as well as to finance his own studies at Rio's Polytechnic, Brazil's oldest engineering school. He earned a degree of civil engineer at the age of 20, the youngest in his class. A few months after graduation, Pestana accepted an invitation to move to Rio Grande do Sul, in order to work in the Porto Alegre to Uruguayana Railroad. The job required constant traveling throughout Rio Grande's hinterland. It was acquainted him with the peculiar politics of the state, uniquely fashioned by the Auguste Comte-inspired dictatorship of Governor Julio de Castilhos. Pestana witnessed the Rio Grande Civil War of 1893-1895, one of the bloodiest conflicts in Brazilian history and was a staunch defender of Governor Castilhos and the Republican Party. In late 1898, Pestano was appointed director of Ijuí, a settlement created eight years earlier in the northwestern part of Rio Grande do Sul. The place was facing a severe crisis caused by bad management and by quarrels among its more than ten ethnical groups. Upon his arrival in early 1899, Pestana gathered the leaders of all immigrant communities in a place currently known as Union Hill, and managed to pacify them. He rationalized the policy of rural settlements, favoring families with previous experience in agriculture, and invested in education and infrastructure, helping to diversify the economy of Ijuí. During Pestana's 13-year tenure, the population rose from 6,000 to 28,000 inhabitants. His administration built approximately 200 miles of roads and bridges over all rivers crossing the settlement.
16 public schools and 16 private ones were opened, catering for 2,000 pupils. Thanks to the environment created by Pestana, the settlement, nearly moribund in 1899, boasted in 1912 more than 100 food factories, 70 shops, 32 grist mills, 42 sugar mills, a typography in four hotels. Half of the local production was exported, including goods such as timber, furniture, tobacco, corn and lard. The steep demographic and economic growth of the settlement allowed Ijui to gain political autonomy in 1912. Pestana was the first mayor of the new municipality, one of the best examples of sustainable development and ethnic integration in southern Brazil. After a brief period as director of the Minas Western Railway, Pestana was elected in 1915 to the National Congress of Brazil. He was re-elected in 1918, always representing the Rio Grande do Sul Republican Party. As a congressman and member of the Budget Committee, he granted priority to rail transport and advocated changes in the policy of public concessions in place since the empire. The railway system in Rio Grande do Sul was particularly affected by the lack of investments from its private owner, the American tycoon Percival Farquhar. The consequences were being strongly felt by the local economy. In 1920, in a joint effort with the federal government, Pestana managed to approve the nationalization of the Rio Grande do railroads. A new company was created, the Rio Grande do Sul Railway, entirely owned by the state government. Pestana left Congress to become the first president and CEO of the company, known by its Portuguese acronym, VFRGS. During the 1920s, first as CEO of VFRGS and later as State Minister for Transport, Pestana improved dramatically the performance of the Rio Grande do Sul railway system. Notwithstanding another civil war, the so-called 1923 revolution, the number of passengers transported in the state rose from 1.1 million in 1920 to 2 million in 1928 while the freight number rose from 640,000 metric tons to 1 million metric tons. Concerned by the increasing dependence on imported fuels, Pestana fostered the procurement of steam locomotives, adapted to locally produced coal. The company also started to assemble passenger and restaurant carriages in its Santa Maria Central unit. Under Pestana, the Rio Grande do Sul Railway became a model of efficiency and good management, which lasted until the absorption of the company by the Brazilian Federal Railway System in 1959. Pestana also had a keen interest in aviation, and supported the creation in 1927 of Varig, Brazil's first airline. Pestana was re-elected to Congress in 1928, and again in 1930, when he supported the presidential bid of Governor Getulio Vargas, his comrade in the Rio Grande do Sul Republican Party. The defeat set in motion the revolution that took Vargas to power. Pestana opposed the deployment of force, and did not participate in the new government. Following the dissolution of Congress in November 1930, he went back to Rio Grande do Sul. His last public task was the modernization of the Porto Alegre Harbor in 1932. On the 29th of May 1934, Pestana died from cancer at the age of 66. Pestana was an archetypical member of the generation that built the first Brazilian Republic, whose duration almost coincided with his career. 
an engineer turned politician, Pestana believed that infrastructure and education were key for the economic and social development of Brazil. The cities of Ijaui and Augusto Pestana are extraordinary examples of the legacy of his public policies and good governance. A statesman in the true meaning of the word, Augusto Pestana was, first and foremost, an engineer at the service of the Brazilian Republic, and of his adopted home, the state of Rio Grande do Sul.